On 21st February 2023, Jeff Mwadi left his house in Kimboriru, excited to meet DJ Fatso, a popular local DJ and musician in Kenya. Unfortunately, hours later, Jeff Mwadi met a tragic end, falling 10 floors from DJ Fatso's apartment complex. So what happened that night? Hello and welcome to Silent Shadows. In today's episode, we'll be exploring Jeff Mwadi's mysterious death. Did he take his own life or was he a victim of foul play? And what was DJ Fatso's involvement? Join us as we explore the troubling questions surrounding the 23-year-old Jeff Mothi's tragic end, approaching these questions with empathy and extensive research. If you appreciate our true crime storytelling, support our bi-weekly series by liking and subscribing. Together, we uncover compelling tales of crimes and mysteries in Kenya and beyond, presenting well-balanced narratives that respect the victims and their loved ones. Born Geoffrey Mwangingugi, Jeff was born on 19 December 1999 in Joron Akuru County, Kenya. He was the firstborn of two children, born to father Peter Ngugi and mother Hannah Mwadi. At the time of his tragic demise, Jeff was a student at Nibs College and according to his mother, he was planning to join her in Qatar in search for greener pastures. Jeff was known by his family and friends as an artistic, cheerful and entrepreneurial young man. On the other hand, DJ Fatso, whose real name is Lawrence Juguna, was born on 25th April 1996 in Nyandaro County, Kenya. He began his DJ profession in small clubs in his hometown of Nyandaro before relocating to Nairobi. In Nairobi, he was hired as a DJ for the popular Sailor's Gang music group, the controversial singers of the popular Kenyan song Wamlambis. He also served as a resident DJ on Kenyatta University's TV. Eventually, he made the decision to record his own songs, which quickly gained popularity and transformed him into a widely recognized Mugidi singer. As fate would have it, the 27-year-old DJ Fatso crossed paths with Jeff Mwadi in 2021, and over the course of two years, their acquaintanceship grew. Although they weren't particularly close friends, they shared a familiar rapport, mainly due to DJ Fatso's frequent visits to Jeff's shop. Located at Mirama Drive near Zimmerman in Nairobi, where he sold shoes. During the interactions at the shop, Jeff had casually mentioned that he was the creative mastermind behind the beautiful interiors of his shop. Furthermore, he expressed his interest in venturing into interior decoration and hoped that DJ Fatso could connect him with potential gigs in that field. In January 2023, taking Jeff's offer to heart, DJ Fatu remembered their conversation when he decided to open a clothing shop near Zitek University main campus, Riru. Determined to explore the possibility of collaborating with Jeff, he contacted Faith Mutanu, the shop attendant whom Jeff had employed at his shop, to get Jeff's number. Unfortunately, little did they know that this innocent connection would mark the beginning of a tragic turn of events that would shatter their lives. Just a few weeks later, fate dealt a cruel hand, taking away Jeff's life. On Monday 21st February 2023, DJ Fatso went to Riru to check on a wines and spirits business in which he had invested. He was accompanied by Kinuthia, the manager of another popular Mugidi artist named Kamoko. Their discussion revolved around how Kinuthia could help DJ Fatso attract more customers to the wines and spirits business. At approximately 2.30 p.m., DJ Fatso shared a popular meme on his WhatsApp status, which Jeff replied to with laughing emojis. DJ Fatso then shifted the conversation towards Jeff's potential involvement in decorating his upcoming clothing shop near Zitek University. Since Jeff lived in Kimbo near Riru, which is a short distance from where the DJ was, he headed out to meet with him. But before leaving the house, he sent his mother, who was based in Qatar at the time, a WhatsApp voice note asking for some pocket money and informing her he was going to meet with DJ Fatso. Around 30 minutes later, Jeff joined DJ Fatso and Kinuthia at Bliss Bistro Riru to discuss the business opportunity. After Jeff's arrival, DJ Fatso got a call from Adam Opao, Churchill's manager, to book him for a show. With Kinudia and Jeff, DJ Fatso went to Ashaki Gardens to meet Arthur. At Ashaki, DJ Fatso asked Jeff to sit behind and prepare a list of materials for decorating his clothing shop. DJ Fatso, accompanied by Kinudia, went ahead to meet Arthur for around 45 minutes 
to finalize the deal. At around 4.30 p.m., they then went to Destiny Gardens Club Ruru, where DJ Fatso met with local Mugidi singer Waitha Kawajini, where they were recording a promo for their upcoming show in Narok. Throughout, Jeff kept his mother updated on WhatsApp about his location and interactions with DJ Fatso. What are your thoughts on DJ Fatso constantly delaying his business discussion with Jeff? Do you find it suspicious or do you believe he's simply a busy celebrity with a lot on his plate and not the best at managing his schedule? Share your opinion by commenting below. For the business discussion with DJ Fatso, Jeff wanted Faith Mutano, his shop attendant, to be involved. They planned to meet Faith in Raisambu, however, they changed plans and headed to see the space in Riru where the DJ wanted to open a shop. While heading there, Jeff asked DJ Fatso to pick up his girlfriend, Faith Wairimu, near Kimbo, before heading to the shop. Afterwards, they picked Faith Mutano at Risambu and proceeded to a Ridgeway's liquor store, reaching at around 8.30 p.m. to 9 p.m. Here, DJ Fatso had a meeting with someone assisting in planning shows for a U.S.-based Kenyan TikTok celebrity. They all enjoyed drinks and later went to Kiba's lounge, arriving at 11.30 p.m. At midnight, the group, including Jeff, was still going strong, enjoying drinks and socializing. DJ Fatso then called his driver, an old high school friend from Nyandarwa, Jeff Miner, to take them home. At around 2 a.m., Miner arrived with DJ Fatso's cousin, Chris Wangombe, who aimed to make it in the music industry and had been staying with DJ Fatso. The group now consisted of DJ Fatso, Chris, DJ Fatso's cousin, Miner, DJ Fatso's driver, Jeff Mwadi, Faith Wairimu, Jeff Mwadi's girlfriend, Faith Mutanu, Jeff Mwadi's shop attendant, and two of Faith Mutanu's female cousins who had joined them for the night. Jeff's girlfriend, Faith Wairimu, then took a taxi and went to her house. The people remaining, these are DJ Fatso, Chris, his cousin, Mina, his driver, Jeff Mwadi, Faith Mutanu, Jeff's shop attendant, and two of Faith Mutanu's female cousins, were then captured on CCTV heading towards DJ Fatso's house at Redwood Apartments on Dika Road. They arrived at DJ Fatso's apartment at 3 a.m., where they continued drinking and listening to music as seen in this video. Two hours later, at around 5.02 a.m., DJ Fatou left the apartment to drop off Faith and her two cousins in Raisambu. However, a few minutes later, the CCTV footage at DJ Fatou's apartment complex showed Minor, DJ Fatou's driver, and Chris, the DJ's cousin, inspecting the ground floor, even opening the bathroom door at the ground floor but not entering. It's as if they were looking for something. They then entered the lift, headed back to the house, a few minutes later, at 5.47 a.m., in another CCTV frame, Jeff was seen falling to the ground. The caretaker of the apartment complex discovered Jeff deceased at around 8.30 a.m. Surprisingly, Jeff's trousers were pulled down to his knees and the window from which he had fallen from was locked, raising the question of who had locked the window after the fall. The caretaker began questioning the tenants, but when he reached DJ Fatou's apartment, there was no response, despite his knocking and Minor and Chris being inside. During his first media press conference, DJ Fatou attempted to clarify the events by stating that he had returned home in the morning to find Jeff missing. In response, he claimed to have immediately accompanied his cousin Chris and drive a minor to the police station to report Jeff as missing. However, this account contradicted the information provided by the police, witness testimonies, and CCTV footage. The evidence showed that DJ Fatso actually arrived home at 9.05 a.m. and was informed about the incident by the security guards. He then joined the gathering around Jeff's body, but quickly covered his face and went up to his house. What are your thoughts on this conflicting information? Do you believe that DJ Fatso, Chris, and Mina are hiding something? Share your thoughts in the comments below.
Jeff's body was taken to the city mortuary. The autopsy revealed that he was alive when he fell from the window and he succumbed to impact upon hitting the ground. On Friday, that March 2023, Jeff was laid to rest in his hometown of Njoro amidst public outcry. Since the police at Kasarani police station had ruled Jeff's demise as an incident of taking one's life. However, both the public and Jeff's family disputed this ruling due to numerous unanswered questions. Following the public outcry, the Directorate of Criminal Investigations, DCI, in Kenya stepped in to investigate on 10th March 2023 Jeff Mothi's mysterious demise. As they delved deeper into the incident, they discovered significant gaps in the story surrounding Jeff's demise. The key piece of evidence that raised eyebrows was the window from which Jeff allegedly jumped from. It was reinforced with grills and proved to be too small for such an act to take place. This revelation sparked even more curiosity and concern. In response to the mountain questions, the Inspector General of Police made a crucial decision. He ordered the exhumation of Jeff's body on Friday, 31st March 2023, hoping that it would provide valuable insights for the ongoing investigations. A second autopsy was conducted, led by the chief government pathologist, Johansen Odor. Like the initial autopsy, the results revealed that Jeff had suffered severe injuries to his head, neck, and limbs. These findings only heightened the need for a thorough investigation into the circumstances surrounding his death. On Tuesday, 9th May 2023, the DCI released a report detailing their findings. However, to the disappointment of many, Jeff Mothi's tragic demise still remained inconclusive, while the most plausible explanation, given the available evidence, emerged as Jeff took away his life. None of the suspects, including DJ Fatso, his driver minor, and his cousin Chris, could be forensically linked to Jeff's untimely demise. The case continued to perplex investigators and the public alike, leaving everyone yearning for answers. The report released by the DCI aimed to shed light on several crucial aspects of the case, addressing some lingering questions, but it left others unanswered. One of the questions answered in the DCI report was the presence of Chris, DJ Fato's cousin, and Mina, the DJ's driver, at the ground floor minutes before Jeff Mwathi fell to his demise. According to the report, both individuals had left the house shortly before the incident and headed to the ground floor to check if DJ Fatso, known for occasionally passing out in his car after a night out, had returned and passed out in his car. The report further outlined that the two men were still in the lift on the way up to the house when the CCTV captured the tragic sight of Jeff Mwathi falling from the 10th floor. This timing made it impossible to establish a definitive forensic link between them and Jeff Mwathi's death. Another perplexing question answered in the report was why Jeff's trousers were found pulled down to his knees. The report outlined that Jeff Mwathi likely jumped from the window, which could explain the positioning of his trousers at the knee level, indicating that his last contact with the window was at his waist. However, the report fell short in addressing other pressing inquiries. For example, the narrowness of the small window in DJ Fatou's house, which could have made it impossible for Jeff Mwathi to jump through. Additionally, the identity of the individual who closed the window after Jeff's fall remained unknown, despite the caretaker's assertion the window was shut. Moreover, the family pointed out inconsistencies in the witness's statement adding another layer of complexity to the case. In light of these unresolved issues, the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions submitted a formal request to the courts, urging an inquest into Jeff Mwathi's death. On Thursday, 8th June 2023, the court approved the request, scheduling the inquest hearing to commence on Thursday, 10th August 2023. A total of 35 witnesses were expected to testify offering their insights and providing further clarity on this haunting tragedy. The inquest into Jeff's death began as planned on Thursday 10th August 2023. 
Jeff's uncle, Mushoki Mwadi, was the first witness. DJ Fatsu's lawyer, Duncan Okach, questioned Jeff's uncle and he tried to show that Jeff had struggled with alcohol abuse and had attempted to take his life twice before his tragic demise at DJ Fatsu's apartment. The lawyer further claimed that these attempts were due to family issues, specifically tensions with his parents, where he felt unhappy because they treated him differently from his younger brother. Jeff's uncle, Mushoki Mwadi, disagreed with these claims in court. He stated that Jeff didn't display any signs of depression. Being not just an uncle, but also a close friend of Jeff, he believed that he would have known if Jeff was going through such emotional struggles. Duncan Okach, the lawyer representing DJ Fatso, also brought forth another distressing claim. He stated that at the time of Jeff's passing, he was without his undergarment and belt. This claim and the discovery that his trousers were also positioned halfway down his legs adds weight to the earlier assertions made by Jeff's family, suggesting that he may have experienced violation before his unfortunate demise. The upcoming witness in the inquest into Jeff's death is his mother, Hannah Mwadi. She is expected to testify on Wednesday, 1st November 2023. We'll be sure to provide you with updates as the case progresses. As we seek justice for Jeff Mwadi, it becomes evident that pursuing a public inquisition offers us a gleam of hope in uncovering the truth surrounding his tragic fate. However, we must acknowledge that public inquisitions have often been the place where cases get buried in Kenya, as argued by Nicolas Como. But we can make a difference. We can keep the flame of hashtag justice for Jeff burning brightly on social media, ensuring that his story remains in the public consciousness. Thank you for joining us today, and we'll see you in our next video, where we delve into the unfortunate loss of LGBTQ activist Edwin Chiloba. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to be notified when the video is up. Until then, please take care, stay safe, and always trust your gut.